Are you one of those people that are on the fence about switching to barefoot shoes? Are you wondering what are the actual benefits and is there any downsides to switching to these shoes? In this video, I'm going to discuss what barefoot shoes are, the truth that no one tells you, and in the end of this video, I'm going to give you my tips and recommendations on how you can save your feet if you plan on using these shoes for the long run. Barefoot shoes are simply shoes that were created with minimal support, with the intention of allowing your feet to have a better interaction with the ground. Unlike most shoes, where there is a lot of cushion throughout the sole that lifts our heels off the ground, barefoot shoes are flat and have very minimal support. As a result, this allows your foot to have normal foot mechanics as you walk and run, including allowing your toes to spread once touching the ground, and giving your feet as much freedom of motion. This typically results in benefits of improving your ankle and foot flexibility, increasing your proprioception, and increasing the strength in your foot muscles, which helps support your arches. Now these shoes have been growing in popularity with brands such as Vivo Barefoot, Vibram, and Zero, now creating many trendy styles that you can literally now find on Amazon. Now, this sounds great, right? But is there any downsides? Well, yes, there can be. And if you just think that you're gonna throw on these pair of shoes and go for a long hike or a one mile run, you are gonna be in for a rude awakening. As humans, most of us grew up with shoes that have lots of cushion, rigid support, with tight shoelaces that created very narrow shoe boxes. We all know that wonderful feeling of buying brand new sneakers, that wonderful smell, and that snug feeling that your feet get. Although these shoes were protective for us and had good intentions, we later realized that they were beginning to restrict our range of motion, further limiting the way your feet were intended to move. Now, what do you you think would happen if you wore over supportive shoes all of your life and suddenly you put your foot in a shoe with no support yep you're right your feet your ankles your knees and hips will go through some changes and although i believe our bodies are resilient sometimes it does not tolerate drastic changes and i know this personally being a physical therapist it's kind of like saying i haven't really been training much but i'm gonna go run a marathon next week not very smart and you will pay for it in the next few weeks now, don't get me wrong, I'm sure there's gonna be individuals out there that can tolerate the transition of a new shoe just fine. But the point is, is that it can take some time for people to adjust to wearing a shoe that is wider, more flexible, and allows your foot to move freely. With less support, you can expect that there will be an increased shock absorption when your foot initially hits the ground, which will increase the demand on all of your foot and lower leg muscles and can be problematic for individuals with fat feet who typically need more support. This is because when you take support away from a shoe, now your foot has to find instant stability on its own when you're walking and interacting with the ground. If your foot doesn't have that support, this can definitely aggravate your plantar fascia and Achilles tendonitis that you've dealt with in the past and leave you with many days of delayed onset muscle soreness. Now, just to be clear, I am all for the barefoot shoe. And I actually own a pair of Vivo barefoot shoes myself, which I've had for six years now. Yes, they can be on the price you're in, but I just had to try them out for myself. I didn't just buy them one day and start wearing them every day. I gave my body time to adapt and monitored how I felt over the weeks as I began to increase my use. When I first started, I literally can feel every pebble, every rock that I stepped on. My calves and my feet were very sore, and on long walks, I can definitely feel the fatigue in my entire body. Luckily, I didn't experience any negative effects or injuries, so I'm thankful for that. But I realized very quickly that my body was going through an adjustment while wearing these shoes and required other muscles of the body to work harder than what they're used to, which was a good thing. So I wanted to give you guys some tips on what I'd recommend if you're thinking about transitioning to these shoes for the long run. Number one tip, make a gradual switch over time. So instead of buying them and just beginning to wear them every day, try switching back and forth between your regular shoes and your barefoot shoes. Then every two days, see how your body and your feet feel. If you notice some muscle soreness and fatigue, pay attention to that feedback from your body and assure that you're giving your feet and your body adequate rest. If you don't notice a change, then it's probably safe to say that you can go ahead and increase your frequency each week. Number two, start off with lower impact activities. So this means walking with shorter distances or spending short durations in the shoe, and then gradually increasing the amount of time you spend depending on how you feel. This doesn't mean that you should buy the shoe and then go on a long, vigorous hike the next day. It will be more physically demanding on your feet if you decide to use them on uneven terrain, 
where you're encountering various bumps, holes, and slopes. So take that in consideration. Next recommendation is to continue focusing on your ankle flexibility. Although wearing barefoot shoes have many benefits to improving your foot health, they don't necessarily solve all of our problems. Most of us have worn regular shoes with extreme cushions all of our lives and don't have the best ankle flexibility unless you're naturally gifted or have been diligently working on your mobility. That is why continuing to focus on your flexibility will still be valuable and worth your time so that you can still work through any of those limitations that you developed over time. You can check out my video on plantar fascia right up here to get started with some good stretches to begin with. My last tip I have to offer, which most of us probably think we're already doing, is taking your shoes off in the evening. Yes, this means spending more time barefoot while you're at home in the evenings and providing your feet with input from the ground to give your feet a break from any shoe wear that you're wearing during the day. And no, this doesn't include wearing slip-on sandals or house slippers. Now, ultimately, I believe that we all have one goal in mind when choosing a shoe, and that is finding shoe wear that will provide our feet with adequate amount of protection and support depending on our desired activity. For instance, if you're a runner and your goal is to develop efficiency, putting longer mileage on your body, you may benefit from a more supportive shoe. And if you're a weightlifter and you're trying to hit a PR on your back squat, you will probably still want to wear your lifting shoes to give you the most advantage. But for general day-to-day -day activities, leisure time, or for those who want to improve their foot health, a shoe that will allow your feet to have freedom of motion and interact with the ground will be the best. This will increase our flexibility and our strength in our feet over time, reducing our risk of injuries and any biomechanical issues as we age. So guys, if you found this video informative, please hit that like and subscribe button to support me. If you have any other topics you'd like for me to cover, please leave a comment below. Thank you and have a nice day.